Good afternoon, one and all. I'm Dona Ajay, student of Semester 6, Amity School of Fashion Design and Technology. Welcome to this interactive e-lecture organized by Amity School of Fashion Design and Technology in association with Institutions Innovation Council, Amity University, Mumbai. Institutions Innovation Council, or IIC, focuses to create a vibrant local innovation ecosystem. It promotes startup supporting mechanism in higher education institutions and establishes functioning ecosystem for scouting and pre-incubation of ideas. MIC has envisioned encouraging creation of institutions innovation council across selected higher education institutions. A network of these IICs will be established to promote innovation in the institution through multitudinous modes leading to an innovation promotion ecosystem in the campuses. Amity School of Fashion Design and Technology was founded in the year 2015 and since has grown and flourished in numbers of students, industry appropriate co courses and professionally qualified faculty. Innovation and creativity have been the benchmark of Amity School of Fashion Design and Technology, where students are encouraged to think creatively and innovatively through academics, seminars, conferences, co-curricular and extracurricular activities. Now, I'm indeed delighted to welcome our guest speaker, Mr. Anurod Agnihotri. He is the program leader of the School of Creative Business at Pearl Academy. He is pursuing his PhD at Amity School of Fashion Design and Technology, Amity University, Mumbai. During his industry experience, he has been extensively involved at various craft clusters for four years with the Ministry of Textile Handicraft Department and exploring product development for handcrafted and exploring product development for different handcrafted product categories. He has worked with various brands such as Reliance Retail and Tata Trend and Hyper City buyer and category head respectively, handling women's ethnic wear businesses. He is here to enlighten us on the topic, lean manufacturing, lean is simple, the American innovator, case study fast cap. This session is inspired from Paul Acker's speeches, books, and various lean maniac activities performed at FASCAP. I would like our guest, Mr. Anurod Agnihotri, to start the session. Please, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dona, for that uh, beautiful words and uh, motivation for sure. Right? And I will um, thank uh, Amity School of Fashion, Design, and Technology for inviting me for this wonderful session. Right, And this journey will be seamless and we'll have amazing fun out of this. So, well, thank you all for having me over here. And uh, that's really pretty exciting. And we are going to have some fun over here during this session. And it's going to be very different probably than anything wherever you would have really heard about. Because, uh, you know, we are a bit little of crazy people over here to validate, uh, you know, the best recent example, which I would like to give is that, you know, I'm getting operated with the weirdest thing to happen, like ligament tear while doing PhD data collection and still playing Coco, a box cricket and all those activities. And my colleagues say, Anurod, you were playing as if you were playing IPL. So there's too many things that are normal about me, right? But I am going to be certified with PhD into lean manufacturing as they say, but that's not all good. Let's get quickly started and learn about what is FastCap. So we said FastCap, okay, what is this? So it's a US-based company. It's a $14 million company spread over 50,000 square feet of area. Small product development company, which has somewhere around 600 to 700 products which they are selling. And guys, it is into woodwork and tool equipments. How is it really related to fashion? Oh, let's answer that in some way. 15 years old company and every year they are innovating. That's the theme what we are looking at. 30 to 40 products every year of innovation. Today we will be talking about that lean journey of FastCap. And how did they do this? This crazy lean culture and people around them, the world, you know, the people around the world come to learn lean over there. Lean is more like a Japanese. They, they, it is bought and brought up in Japan by Toyota. But how come US companies had really gone to it doing this and especially FastCap? So this particular session is inspired from Paul Aker's different kind of books which he has published. Two Second Lean is something which has been inspirational for me. So they say that we have a lot of fun doing what we do. That was is the tagline which they use. Next slide, please. So uh, sorry, Donna, you can share the slides. Perfect. 
Yeah, next slide, please. So as you see, um, second slide, please. Yeah, perfect. Excellent. So what are we really looking at? There has to be a goal in every day what we do, right? As you know, I'm a very goal-oriented person. Everything we do, what I do is from making Excel sheet, playing cricket, whatever we do needs to be goal oriented. So today's session for sure has to be very goal oriented, right? And a very, very simple because I'm here with a very simple methodology to explain you what is lean. I tend not to complicate things, which has surely worked for me and whatever I do nowadays. Right. And what is the ultimate goal? My ultimate goal is you to see waste like you have never seen this before. So might be 45 minutes from now, you will now log out from this talk session and think differently about waste. Then you have really logged in right now. And when we do that, we will say we win. That's it. We are here to win. You need not remember lean methods, principles, etc., etc. There are so many concepts behind leans. No, you don't need to remember that. You just need to say, I see waste differently that I have ever seen it before. And if that happens, this 45 minutes will be a great success, guys. Now, what is lean? This th third slide. Can you just, uh, uh, Dona, can you please just uh, press F5? Let's have that animation rolling that, you know, how electrifying this entire lean is. So you'll be able to see from this particular slide that lean is electrifying. Oh my God, that's, that's about it. So we are always electrified. I am always electrified. You might be looking at me and saying that this guy is electrified because, you know, the word lean, already seeps in into me and I get electrified with that. It should be the most outrageous thing you ever encounter in your life. Why? Because it's going to be a game changer for everybody you are over here. Game changer, guys, the way you look things around. Next slide, please. Uh, the above one, please. The fourth slide, yeah. Thank you, dear. Thank you. So, so I have a couple of ground rules. Let's very, it's very simple. Again, lead is simple. I have to make it simplified and it has to be fun. So there are certain, you know, during my PhD data collection, we actually mastered this and we wanted to make it more simpler. And I like to make things fun because we know as the reason, why do I do that? It's because I get I cannot get too technical. If you ask me, please tell me in technical below lean. I'll say, oh no, I want to make it simpler. I want everybody to apply lean. So we'll just illustrate some few powerful, simply set uh, this thing, uh, exercises over here, some videos, which will simplify your life. Next slide, please. Perfect. Now, there have been a lot of professional studies which have been done. And I guess this study has been done by Howard. Right. And the question which they wanted to study was that, why do students learn? They have spent $5 million, guys, to answer this question. And they have taken five years to figure out why students learn. Learn what they found out. Ultimately, what happened? That entire money, guess what was the conclusion towards it? You see the first image on the bottom right, left side? They said that if the students show up to the class, they will learn. So how, however they come, right? You see the kind of picture they have. And then the second was that, you know, the, it says that if you sit in the front row, you will learn better. Oh my God. These two, these two solutions, five millions and five years. Oh, nothing more to add on to it. Next slide, please. So now one of my best thinker guys, you all would be really fond of him, right? iPhone, everybody somewhere or other would have aspired or use iPhone. So he's my best favorite leader who is a lean thinker, guys. Now, you might not be knowing me. Steve Jobs is a lean thinker. Best of all time. And he got 
lean at a very high level before anybody ever would have really got into that. So I'm going to play a video here, right? And I'm going to show you what lean looks like in Steve Jobs' mindset. Let's go on. We're going to reinvent the phone. Now, we're going to start with a revolutionary user interface. Is the result of years of research and development. And of course, it's an interplay of hardware and software. Now, why do we need a revolutionary user interface? I mean, here's four smartphones, right? Motorola Q, the Blackberry, Palm Treo, Nokia E62, the usual suspects. And what's wrong with their user interfaces? Well, the problem with them is really sort of in the bottom 40 there. It's, it's this stuff right here. They all have these keyboards that are there whether you need them or not to be there. And they all have these control buttons that are fixed in plastic and are the same for every application. Well, every application wants a slightly different user interface, a slightly optimized set of buttons just for it. And what happens if you think of a great idea six months from now? You can't run around and add a button to these things. They're already shipped. So what do you do? It doesn't work because the buttons and the controls can't change. They can't change for each application, and they can't change down the road if you think of another great idea you want to add to this product. Well, how do you solve this? Hmm. It turns out we have solved it. We solved it in computers 20 years ago. We solved it with a bitmap screen that could display anything we want, put any user interface up and a pointing device. We solved it with the mouse, right? We solved this problem. So how are we going to take this to a mobile device? Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. A giant screen. Now, how are we going to communicate this? We don't want to carry around a mouse, right? So what are we going to do? Oh, a stylus, right? We're going to use a stylus. No. no. Who wants a stylus? You have to get them and put them away and you lose them. Yuck. Nobody wants a stylus. So let's not use a stylus. We're going to use the best pointing device in the world. We're going to use a pointing device that we're all born with. We're born with 10 of them. We're going to use our fingers. So isn't that, that guy is wonderful? You know, what do you think about that video? Genius, isn't it? Very simple. Very simple. He got it. He wanted everyone to be able to buy it and use it friction-free, no burden, no hassle, fun, easy, and you see, ultimate lean thinker. Those keys were not flexible, guys. You couldn't change as the customer needs developed. As technology changed, the needs changed. So what does do fast cap do? There is nothing which is built in their entire plant which cannot move. The tables can move. The walls can move. Ideally, there are no walls. Everything which you see at FastCap has wheels. Everything is on wheels. Today, I want to change the layout of my entire floor. I'm able to do that. Everything flexible. And from, from where did we learn this? Steve taught us, Steve taught me, taught me that you don't make the keys built in. So as the customer needs changed, we can roll our office desk anywhere we want. We can move our equipment, our machinery everywhere we want. It's like nothing you have ever seen before. It's all simple. We just need to put everything on wheels and make it flexible. The word flexible. Now it's turned out that idea of simplicity is everywhere. Not only in technology with Steve Jobs, it also has to do with a beer. A beer? Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, please roll on. Tonight we kick off our new series, The Connection. Here's the concept. The world is full of unsolved problems, both large and small, but it's also full of creative, smart people who are coming up with extraordinary solutions. That's The Connection. Here's Dan Simon. 
The best place to see Josh Springer's invention is at a ball game, but away from the action. How simple is the technology? It is. It's very simple. It's very, very simple. To fully appreciate it, you need to have two traits. One, you hate standing in line. Two, you have an affinity for beer. I've got Bud Regular. Um, i got Michelob Ultra. I, I don't, I'm the kind of guy that won't wait in a beer line. I go to the event. I pay good money for the seats. So just to prove to himself it could be done. Everybody looked at me like I was crazy. He set out to end the beer line forever with a dispenser that pours the beer from the bottom up. The speed is something to behold. Springer says he holds an unofficial world record for pouring 56 beers in one minute. His videos on YouTube have gone viral. Why do you think people get so excited seeing a beer uh, filled up from the bottom? That's a great question, but I still kind of giggle when I see it happen, too. It just kind of captivates you. So how do you fill a beer up from the bottom? Well, as you may have suspected, there's a hole in the bottom of the cup. But the key to making all this work is with this, a simple magnet. So when you put, put the cup on here, the magnet is suspended, and then the liquid comes in, and then you just... Right, the liquid comes in from, from around the holes or underneath the magnet. Once the beer is filled, just grab the cup, and the magnet forms a perfect seal with a tin ring embedded in the cup. What do people do with the magnets when they're done with them? They take them home and put them on their fridge. Which leads to Springer's second great idea. Get advertisers to put their logos on the magnet. There is, though, the occasional instance. You see, it's such a simple way out, a magnet doing wonders. And it has increased the task of serving a beer nine times more. And what ultimately is a problem? That every audience would like to come over there to watch the sports. They do not want to wait in a queue for 15, 20 minutes and miss out on the game, right? Isn't that what the customer wants? If we are able to simplify, look at things in a different perspective, a magnet, which can give a marketing impact as well, can make wonders for you. Next slide, please. So how do we really come across? How do I do it at my home? I do not want to do anything. Let's do it at from home or might be the place where I'm sitting right now, the desk where I'm starting. So let's understand a tool, which is very simple, which is called as 5S. And step number one, sort. So, which involves going through all the tools, the furniture, material, equipment, and the work area, you determine where you want to apply this tool. What needs to be present and what needs to be removed? What do you need to ask when, how will you do that? So you say that, what's the purpose of this item? Why is this bottle over here? Why is this mobile over here? When did I really use that particular item lastly? Then, how frequent do I do use it? How do I use it? Does it really need to be there? Next slide, please. So, do yourself these questions, right? Do I need the objects every day in my work? Next slide, please. If yes, you need it, put a red tag. And if you do not need it, put it aside with a yellow tag. Please go ahead, please. Next slide. Then the second step is, see, these are very simple steps to be, you know, worked on. Set in order. What is set in order? During this particular activity, everyone should determine what arrangements are most logical. That will require thinking through task, the frequency of those tasks, how frequently I use it, the path people take to that particular space, et cetera, et cetera. Let's not get into technicalities. Next slide, please. Shine. What do you mean by shine? It's, it is saying that hot objects, which are very much daily into use. Next slide, please. Then we have cold objects which you rarely use. This is in bi-pocket box or the articles which you have in our table. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah. And then put the hot objects you can really reach out as very that I'm not able to see the next slide please that's slide number 15 yeah okay th thank you yeah shine what does shine say 
shine is normally shining the workplace i need to shine every day right so it's very important right it shouldn't be left for somebody else to clean that's my table i need to clean it every day right so you have to take the responsibility of everything which is around you right ideally because you're using it every day because you take that ownership next slide please standardize what do you mean by standardization so a systematic way to keeps everything everywhere you might be doing this every time you are applying 5s if your water is really clean for years and years but now see very simple how did that really come across by 5s you implement 5s you sustain which is you continue these best practices standardization shine sort everything and you are in place bang on that everything is sorted for you next slide please sustain as i said continuously you are doing it your wardrobe is clean your workplace is clean next slide please so if you are able to do that and if i am not able to do it then oh no probably you are not you are very far away from being a lean enterprise or a lean person altogether right next slide please now how do i relate this to fashion okay here comes that thing bagru hand block printed everybody might be knowing it google search it you will get it that there's a there's a cluster based out of rajasthan where the hand block printing happens the place is bagru how did they really do this next slide please what do you see over here it's so many blocks 25000 hand block printing blocks really difficult to find which design do i want when do i want it where do i keep it confusion 3 hours guys every day spending 3 hours to find the block which is which is there and who is doing this task an artisan is doing a task what is he meant for an artisan is meant to use his art on to designing and printing but what is he doing 3 hours he is spending on finding a block which is getting his frustration levels increased his creativity pulling down what did we do we applied 5s next slide please so simple see the thing which i showed you again i am repeating sorting we sorted you know the most frequent used blocks there were duplication of blocks ek design there was one more design of it we removed those blocks 38% of duplicates guys then we segregated it design wise then they have some outer color inside color outer outer line right so we segregated those and then fourth what we did is that while sorting we build a capacity that how much capacity do i really have how much space do i have in my wardrobe to keep those clothes right so capacity wise next slide please then we used a very simple tool called pokayoki what is pokayoki it's a japanese word right what does yoki say avoid mistakes poka means mistakes avoid mistakes if i'm keeping a block i might tend to keep a block like this like this so shd perspective is optional right i am giving a direction saying that now you need to keep a block like that because i have designed that space for that block to be kept like that so what have i done i have set things in orders right next slide please shine your place should be beautiful enough for you to work so clean up campaign have some beautiful you know colors clean that thing every day next slide please standardization who does it a person who owns it it's not some manager who comes and do this it's the artisans who do it and the artisans and enjoy doing this having an interaction regularly maintaining it and doing this seri c2 say so which is the earlier four s's perfectly so you see an artisan also understands this it's very simple lean simple go at please next slide then you need to have regular cleaning maintenance of the blocks the place where you keep it most importantly guys i am not good at numbers i do not want to look at numbers the artisan doesn't like numbers they like colors right so colors let's paint the blocks color wise that track is colored in green the artisan will keep the green color work there life is simple so what have we really used visual management visual controls instinctive red to red yellow to yellow he knows where to keep it simple move ahead thank you next slide yeah standardize 
What do you mean by standardization? We just put those blocks on a paper, like block printing, and then we numbered it. Then we filed it, and now we are doing standardization. If those blocks get you know used up, used up, used up, I have to remake it. The only way out is that I take this paper, give it to the block maker, and he does it for me. I'm doing a standardization. Next slide, please. Then use artificial intelligence, guys. Now in a very, very good era, right? Somebody wants everybody over there, an artisan has a mobile phone, smartphone. How will he really look at you know what design is that block? Simple. Google open QR code scanner. You scan it and you get that impression in your mobile. This is the design because we scanned it and put it into QR codes. Anybody can scan this. Simple, right? They were able to do that. Next, next slide, please. Sustain, which is the most important and the deadliest part, because we set set things, but we are not able to sustain it. We are not able to take it for a longer duration. How do we do that? Train the artisan that is very simple to continue this journey, and they do it on a regular mood, and they get habituated to do this because the benefit is that they are saving three hours. Eleven artisans, each saving three hours. That frustration, they found that benefit, and they are sustaining it. Next slide, please. And how do I make life simpler for managers? Put those scan sheets to an Excel file. You search the name. You'll find that image where that particular block is kept, and then you approach and pick up the block and start working on it. What's the results? Next slide, please. Every day, ten thousand eight seconds were reduced to four hundred and twelve seconds. So in four hundred and twelve seconds, now they were able to find that design which they wanted to, and happily with a smile on the face. Right? This is what we the ultimate goal is. There was a lot of waste, frustration, remove it with simple methodologies, with the artisans can impact. Next slide, please. And the chat box is open for you all to please ask me any questions, guys, right? So please do that. So now we have so many waste. If, we, if I ask any consultant to find and eliminate the waste, they will really complicate the entire process. But then where are these solutions? Is it in the brain? And the answer is no, it is not in the brain. Next slide, please. Where is it? It is right beneath your nose. And mostly we never see this. Next slide, please. Now let's see, that's, that's the rolling off for me, guys. Please propose any question which you have. So let's see the difference be between an operational excellence and a typical operation. What is the operation? What task I do? An excellent task and a simple task, a typical task which I do. Next slide, please. So example which I'm taking over here is very simple, which you all will relate. That how much time would you take to change a tire, guys? You give it, give it to somebody, he will take at least 25 to 30 minutes. Why? Because the operation lacks directions. Confused state of mind, what is to be done when? So when you make processes really, really simple or easy, then you can fix up the tire as simple as that and clear your mind with those processes and relax as well. Let's look at a typical operation. Go ahead, please. They have got the tyres ready. The tyres are ready. Ricardo is sat there waiting. Did he make the call? Did the team make the call? Whoever made the call, the tyres weren't ready. Super soft tyres going on. Hamilton now makes his way around Anthony Nose, the final corner. Ricardo put in a really decent lap, but is it going to be enough to come out of the pits and lead this Grand Prix? I rather get the feeling that it's going to be tight one. Here comes the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton. Ricardo on the inside. Hamilton takes the lead. But Ricardo, of course, has that inside line into Sandoval. Hamilton now leads after a pit stop that saw Daniel Ricardo sat stranded waiting for his tyres. I was called in the box. I didn't make the call. I got called, so 
they should have been ready. How do you think that? What was this? Does the customer really play pay for your operational glitches? You ordered for a pizza, but there was no tomatoes on that. Did you pay for that? Operational glitches. Somebody making a pizza. Somebody fitting the tire. Right. The answer is no. You all, as customers, shouldn't be paying for that. Let's look at an example of how operational excellence can really work out. Next slide, please. you saw people were relaxed that's the most important thing so how much time does it really take are you aware of one thing that you know toyota cars how much does it how much time does it take to make a toyota car any guesses days hours minutes answer is 3 minutes the car which you are using a toyota car is manufactured in only 3 minutes guys that too without any defects which is the most important part there are manufacturers who manufacture car but they have a dedicated parking lot where they are removing these defects which are there to be manufactured so the the biggest question is that what fast cap really has to answer is that they have innovated at every process they said that each and every employee has to save 2 seconds in whatever activity they do every day imagine the kind of waste the kind of seconds which they are reducing in their process there are so many people so many competitors who walk in to fast cap they can just observe things they can duplicate it best practices duplicate is very simple how do they really do that are they very processive about it they say no we want people to come and look at us imitate us but we will not lose our usp why the answer is kaizen what is kaizen it's a japanese word it says that change for betterment what does fast cap do they say that every day you will see something new to us tomorrow you come the entire layout is changed we are at continuous improvement to, to catch up whatever is there possible eliminate waste and do things in the right and a simple way to conclude we have so many methods you can stop sharing the screen guys thank you thank you dona so very simple who is a best lean manager your mom is a best lean manager you know why she makes chapati at home what does she do she says that how many chapatis will you consume she already knows that that means she knows how much dough or atta she has to really preserve in inventory ek mahine mein kitna atta lagega how much so she is already calculating that she has that budget the inventory is low she never wants the food to get wasted then she talks about ikatta baith jao chapati kha lena theek hai फिर से ब्रेक मत देना वॉट इज सी डूइंग कंटिन्यूस फ्लो राइट शी वॉन्ट्स टू लिवर यू अ क्वालिटी फूड फ्रेश फूड फ्रेश चपाती इन अ कंटिन्यूस मोड एंड वेन शी टेस इज दैट दैट लेट्स नॉट टेक गैप्स यू वी विल आई प्रिपेयर द चपाती फॉर यू रेगुलरली इन दैट पर्टिकुलर वन आर वॉट इज सी डूइंग शी इज ट्राइंग टू सेव टाइम शी इज द बेस्ट लीन मैनेजर विच यू कैन सी एट होम ओवर टू यू गाइज फॉर क्वेश्चन Uh, yes, sir. We have couple of questions from the participants. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, the first question is, uh, what are the organizational, operational and human barriers of lean manufacturing? Okay, the only one thing, change. Whenever you talk about change, each and every individual, right, is reluctant to go for that change. I say, I want to save two seconds today, right? I want this water bottle, which is kept over here, to be kept somewhere else so that I can save that two seconds. The change which you're talking about is something which really hurts each and every individual. So the lean culture starts from beginning acceptance of change. If you're agreed for change, lean culture is in with you. That's the only barrier, guys. Next question, please. If I'm able to answer your question. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, what is the difference between lean manufacturing system and mass production strategies? Mass production strategy and lean. See, lean is very simple. Uh, mass production is might be, you know, you want to optimize things and you want to make the most important thing like making batches. What do you mean by making batches? That like I want to manufacture 10,000 shirts at one go. I want to manufacture 10 cars at one go, which is a big no in lean. They say one piece flow. Make one, move to the next. Make second, move to the next. What, how does it really help? If you are making any mistakes in the first piece which you are making, you have a scope to remove that defect and now apply that in the next piece. Now imagine 10,000 pieces you are making or might be 10 cars you are making. You are making that same mistake in those 10 cars when they are out in the market. That's when you realize and you say, oh my God, now I need to recall all those. So one piece flow, is the method which is used in lean manufacturing and in mass production, as the word says, mass, mass, bulk production. The chances of defects, inventories is more over there. Waiting time is more. You are not able to change things as per the customer needs and wants. Today, I, the buyer says that I want only 5,000 shirts, but now you have planned for 10,000 pieces. And when I go for one piece flow, I can surely look at the flexibility. Agile systems is something which lean learns, teaches you. I hope I've been able to answer your question. Yes, sir. We have another question, sir. What are some of the examples of which all the companies have implemented lean manufacturing system? What are the examples of, okay. So it will start with, you know, respecting people. There are some pillars, right? So I'm not getting into technical reasons. So there are some pillars of lean manufacturing which say, you know, start respecting people. The best way, you know, what FastCap does, if you as a student, as me as a PhD scholar, want to go and look at the vicinity, what do they first do? They ask you to go to the washroom. <gasps> Why? Clean the washroom first. You will learn how do we respect the people. You know, the washrooms are spick shine. You need not even clean it. You go over there, you'll see that, you know, the person who has used the washroom cleans it as if he's supposed to be the next person to use that washroom, that ownership. So always we say lean starts from the washroom. So that's, that's the easiest way I can communicate you that where does lean really start and where can you really implement an example of it? I hope I'm able to answer your question. Yes, sir. Uh, we have another question. How large does a company have to be to practice efficient lean manufacturing? And what kind of inefficiencies can lean manufacturing eliminate? Okay. How big, how small? No, a smaller startup. You know, it's really good if you start, you're, you're starting off with lean. So it doesn't need to be a huge scale because we are not looking at optimization over here. It's very simple. If you see that the artisan example, which I have given you, that can start from a basic, you know, a small run house, you know, artisan also. You need not to be big or small. That's not entirely a concept of audit. I'm not talking about optimization over here. We're talking about making life simpler, looking at the waste. And what is the second part of the question? If I'm not wrong, can you please uh, re reiterate the second part of it? Uh, yes, sir. What kind of inefficiencies can lean manufacturing eliminate? Okay, inefficiencies. So uh, let's take an example. Uh, inefficiency is that, you know, your mom is making a uh, chapati, right? And you say that, uh, Mom, I'm having it and my father will come after 10 minutes to have it. What's the inefficiency? My mom is waiting. She was in a flow of making chapatis, right? She made 10 chapatis in 10 minutes. Now she's taking a break. And then the next time when father comes on the dining table, it is taking 12 minutes. What is really happening? 
she was in a flow right so that more two minutes will be spent and the quality output which is supposed to come will again get stopped so these are certain inefficiencies and there are seven lean deadly waste what are those not getting technicalities there are seven deadly waste defect is one simple thing which you can understand inventory the amount of material raw material which you are st storing then you have a waiting time that you know i am waiting for somebody to do a task and then i do the task three simple things which i have communicated right so these are the inefficiencies in any process which you observe do not wait there should be a pull system rather than a push system i hope i am able to answer your question i have wrote the yes ma'am Yes, so I'm so tempted to ask a question, you know, and yes, thank please. you so much. Privilege. Thank you so much for a very interesting talk. I think you've uh, put the focus back on the fact that lean manufacturing is not just for automated processes. Yes, and it's extremely applicable in all kinds of uh, non-automated, you know, absolutely manual, labor-intensive kind of procedures as well. And I think that's a revelation. So thank you so much for bringing that on the table. And you. uh, so you've chosen a very interesting uh, example of uh, block printing, which is also yes. supposedly your uh, PhD topic that you're pursuing currently. Yes. Uh, do you think you know um, applying lean manufacturing to a process like block printing, which is hundred percent manual and very very labor intensive, as I just said, is going to bring about some sort of a cycle efficiency, or as you know how how you would measure the kind of product? Uh, uh, basically, uh, how how do you put it like? you know uh, the fact of how the product can be uh, made to be as an output of a better value will you will that add to it yes so uh, a simple example ma'am which i can give over here for thank you for asking that question that you know we see that uh, a block maker when he is putting those blocks on to that fabric very simple observation what he does so he has a tray on the right hand side and what he does in a motion is that he's moving his hand towards 90 degrees of angle so he is wasting some he is using some seconds to do that motion what if that tray is just adjacent to his fabric or elevated to it so we made a beautiful tray table right which was elevating to the existing table and the movement which was 90 degrees have been now reduced to only 10 degrees what is happening two benefits out of it that the motion which he is doing the lead time the seconds which are taking is fractional might be you know 0.0001 seconds is what i am uh, really you know uh, reducing it in that motion but if you calculate with the number of block printing he does for a sari which is more than 400 times in a sari if there are multiple colors now we can imagine that 0.001 seconds how much it is improvising he is able to make 12 saris in a day when he was doing eight saris a day secondly the motion which we are talking about is reduced wherein his fatigueness to do that work he is getting tired by doing this has been reduced to very minimalistic so very simple methodologies can surely impact and when you talk about value if you talk about it's entirely ma'am it's very contradictory to put lean into you know the value of money because we are talking about people getting efficient and simplifying them it is a by product money is a by product for it it will get efficient for sure by this there will be a customer who will value a product because ultimately you are doing everything with value ma'am any process which you take making it from block till the end shipping it to the customer everything is value driven ma'am thank you for asking that question i hope i have answered your question ma'am yes yes you have a uh, very good choice of topic anurodh i think uh, congratulations it's a very very forward thinking topic thank you ma'am thank so you so all the best to you thank you ma'am thank you Any questions from other here? Yeah, I guess. Yes, so yes, yes, so we have a couple more questions. Yeah, wow. Uh, I have uh, uh, what are the criticisms in lean manufacturing? Oh, criticism is one thing which you know every time face is that criticism is why do you are asking us to change? You know, we artisans are doing the best. When I really talk about artisans, right? Anything you say, you know, you 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 want to go for a walk. you go for a gym right you are doing a pull ups your instructor says nahi aise nahi do it the other way you say no i am used to habituated doing this for a year now why am you why you really asking me to change the outputs are the same change is certainly become the target this is the biggest problem in applying lean or any change so i will repeat that again lean 
is equal to change, everyday change, which is reluctant to each and every individual today. It could be you, me, everybody over here. Yeah, I hope I have been answering your question. Yes, sir. We have one more question. Is adoption of lean manufacturing a stressful process for employees? Not at all. See, when that culture or a habit, as I said that, you know, that artisan was spending three hours every day getting frustrated to find a block and he's not even getting paid for it because he gets paid on this number of saris which he's manufacturing. Now, if I've been able to reduce it to 416 seconds, he's now very happy. He's able to produce more. That means he's able to see the benefit. We all over here are goal oriented, right? If we look at the goal, if that particular process is making simplified, if I'm able to achieve that goal very quickly, why not apply lean? It's just a change which we are requesting for. It's just a change we are looking at for. So that's the reason why we said that lean is something which will get you to onboard with simpler things. Right? I hope I'm able to answer your question. Yes, sir. Any other questions, Donna, we have? Electrifying, as we say, lean is electrifying. I think, you know, an hour to now get back to normal. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Any questions? Uh, Dona, we have something in the chat box which I haven't been able to comprehend. Probably somebody who's more and more knowledgeable in the field will be able to say what that means. Monaco pitch spot failure. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ma'am, what is he really saying? That the video which I had shown, right, yeah. he's really particularly been pointed out, you know, that that was a Monaco uh, pit stop, right, where this entire failure happened. So he knew more detail about that particular video. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay, so he's, he's just dropped in a small uh, pointer. Yes, huh? more infos. All right. Yes, so we have uh, one more question. Yes. What is the goal of lean manufacturing and how it can help the future technologies? Okay, the goal of lean manufacturing is that Whatever activity we do, we do an activity from, you know, me walking from here, reaching it to a metro station. That's the activity which I'm doing. During this activity, how can I really remove the waste? The waste could be, how can I reduce the time? How can I reduce my effort to reach out to that particular place? So point A to point B, every activity has a point A to point B. How simple can you really make it by removing the waste? adding value to it. I'm giving a sari to a customer, right? How much amount of money have I really kept blocked in terms of inventory which I have at my store, right? Can I minimize that inventory? Can I give a defect-free product to them? So that's the ultimate goal for lean. Add value to whatever product or whatever service you're providing. I hope that answers your question. That's lean. I, there was a second part to that question, if I'm not wrong. Can you please reiterate that? Yes, sir. So we have another question. Yes, go ahead. What is the future of sites or brands that deals in fast fashion? The world is becoming conscious about the minimizing waste and fast fashion produces a lot of waste. So uh, what do you think is the solution and scope and any possibility of green manufacturing? Okay. So two very different questions, the concepts got on the same platform. So we say fast fashion. What is fast fashion? That fast moving, the customers are adapting. They want something quick changeovers, right? They want some fashion to be there. Today I'm wearing this particular shirt. The next day I want something to wear, something good. The shelf life becoming reduced, right? When you go to that store, I go to the next day, it's entirely in revamp. That's what Zara sees, right? Fast fashion. How do you apply lean manufacturing to it? I guess that fast fashion, is something where manufacturer comes into play, manufacturing comes into play. When are we applying manufacturing? There's no harm right now. You, you will see that there are a lot of researchers who are doing a research saying that, you know, fast fashion is not good for us, right? I'm not getting into that part of it. I'm talking about how efficient can we really do? So if today I was able to manufacture 30 shirts in a day, 
by applying by fast fashion for sure because that's the sector which we are talking about if i am able to apply lean manufacturing and increase that efficiency to 40 what will happen the people whom we are saying that you know they getting exploited because of fast fashion you know that stress can really get reduced and wherever you name zara h&m you name any of these brands everybody apply lean manufacturing in their organizations in the man in the manufacturing units the garments which are made are being made by lean tools you will not find a single thread lying on the floor you will won't find a single nut or a bolt of that patla machine which is lying over there they are so centric are you aware that you know the operators who are working for this fast fashion or the normal fashion also they have different colors of scarves because you know a pink scarf says that she is in the maternity phase she needs to be very slow there is some a green scarf which says that she is very good at operations she is very smooth at it there are certain with a blue one which says that he is under the training process you see how empathetic how respectful this entire lean can get into the cultures it is all to say respect people who are with they will give you the output whether it could be a fast fashion what does fast fashion say produce faster right so if we apply which is already been applied right everywhere if we go to bangladesh sri lanka vietnam these are countries who are already applying fast fashion to lean manufacturing and they getting the results so the only thing which we can do is that respect people and get the output which lean really has the one pillar all together i hope i am able to answer your question uh yes sir uh, uh, uh the participants can raise their hands if they have any other questions oh yeah i want so to we'll hear wait. somebody yeah. so please raise your hands <laughs> oh so i think so i was really successful in giving the setting up that goal ultimately everybody who walks out from this webinar will say that yes i see waste in a different way altogether isn't that what the goal was right so i'm just presuming that no questions are asked that means they have started to identify the waste in the systems and the processes which they do every day yes anurodh i'm completely with you i think they have understood and i think that's not a rare phenomenon where the speaker is talking and the audience is just listening <laughs> <laughs> so i guess uh, they they have been you know very interested in listening to what you've done and you know and have been working on and it's an incredible kind of a study you know i think we've all been through this yes ma'am and it's taken us through a very different passage of understanding lean manufacturing and i think you know sometimes i wonder when i listen to all kinds of uh, information on lean manufacturing is it why hasn't it occurred to people before considering that you know it's such a simple logical thought of moving to productive completely productive procedures and eliminating all the unproductive procedures from and processes from the system so, so true, i think it's obviously supposed to be a natural phenomenon of why should yes. we allow unproductive processes to be there at all yes so true ma'am why to get so frustrated with the processes which we we do not add value to anything so you yes. so rightly said ma'am yes yes so i think everybody should be soon moving to it it should be like almost coming naturally to all procedures and uh, so what do you think is the cost of shifting from a so called unlean to a lean you know kind of a setup uh ma'am i guess uh, there's no cost per se involved because the tools which we are implementing is as simple as that you know uh, if i take you know let's not talk about a uh, organization where let's say i have a wardrobe right and i have i know how much stuff can i really keep in that particular wardrobe where my shirts are stacked where are my trousers stacked stack where are my socks stacked you know the way which we keep it can make life simpler i can have a beautiful coordinated look all together in the morning because i don't want to get frustrated looking at you know the clothes and then do that coordination part of it so lean is simple there is no cost involved to it it's just like these tools which are there poka yoki then kaizen and so many tools no cost at all ma'am it's just that that change is in the only thing as i always say change and respecting people is something which we have which doesn't cost anything will really make the make the changes mm. so i think it's only a, a, a shift in ideation it's a complete shift in you know the complete um, the 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 fact of mindset. how the implementation yes the process and thinking yes that's the mindset ma'am and uh, yes. the artisan that bagru have really shown a good 
way of getting into change. They That's are now putting all the blocks on place and they are archiving it. They are having these regular meetings also every month. They, whatever new blocks are coming, they are putting into place because they've got that, you know, the benefit out of it. And they didn't get there was no cost as such involved. Those racks were costing somewhere on, you know, 1200 rupees. That's, that's something which is very, very simplistic because each block, the duplication, 38% blocks were there, which were duplication. Now each block cost around 1800 rupees plus ma'am, that artisan who is doing that block making, he's wasting time on repeating the blocks. So I guess that cost factor has also been really looked upon and it's very cost effective. Yes, yes. So if you can do it to block printing, which is a cottage level industry and completely unstandardized, you know, I think it's a eureka. It's a complete yes. eureka and it can happen to any other industry then with as much ease as how you've suggested it. So true, so, ma'am. Yes, I'm really looking forward for these changes nowadays. <laughs> so are we, yes. Great, so Donna, do we have anything else to be taken up from the students? No, ma'am, that will be all. So can we conclude yes. the session? Absolutely, yes. Go yes. ahead, Donna. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Anurodh Agnihotri for this, uh, on behalf of MT School of Fashion Design and Technology family for this wonderful and enriching session. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would like to thank MIT University for allowing us to arrange this webinar. I thank our director, Bhavna Ma'am, and all the faculty members of MIT School of Fashion Design and Technology for taking such an initiative. I would also like to thank Institutions Innovation Council for providing us with this portal to highlight innovative projects. Last but not the least, the spirit of participation enthralled by the participants is the backbone to this success. Thank you one and all. Keep on designing, keep on innovating. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Bhavna.